Why do seeds grow? That's what we're going to find out in Mark 4. All right. So Mark has 16 chapters in its short book. We are on four, so we're almost a quarter of the way through. So we have already completed one-fifth of Mark. So this is cruising along quite well. Mark starts off with parables. Of course, we're going to have to get to the parables. So Jesus is teaching by the sea. He's inside of a boat. Because so many people were crowding him out, he was able to speak to people on the shore. So he talks about the parable of the sower, which we heard in Matthew. Some went rocky soil, so it didn't really take. Some fell among the thorns, which then it got choked out. Those are people who are sort of immersed in the world. It fell along the path, you know, all the things. So we know the parable of the sower. And we understand that Jesus likes to talk to parables. And we're going to even hear a new parable coming up soon. When Jesus is walking with his apostles, the 12, they said, why are you talking about parables? They asked him about this. And he said, you've been given the secret of the kingdom of God. Remember, this is now not the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. But for those who are outside of everything is in the parables. So they may not see it. They may not hear it or understand it. It says, quote, in ESV, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parable, so that they may indeed see, but not perceive, may indeed hear, but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. And so you say, oh, that's kind of harsh, dude. Why do you want to say things in a way that people won't perceive it, hear it, understand it, and then be forgiven? Why are you withholding information from people? And I don't think that Jesus is ever holding information away. He is using parables, and there were parables before. Uh, way back in 2 Samuel, David heard a parable from Nathan the prophet. He wanted him to understand. Parables you have to work out, you have to think about. And like I said in Matthew, don't look to identify every single dot inside of a parable. The idea is the story itself. You know, there are nuances to it, but don't think that the birds mean evil when they could mean that it's like a tree is healthy. Don't try to dig into too much detail. The purpose was not to keep people from heaven, but to force people to dig in, to listen, to then understand, and then they can be forgiven because they understand what this is about. I also think that these are stories that everyone would understand. Sowers for farmers and fishermen. And these are all things that people get. I think where he's getting at in this whole mystery, they talk about the mystery of the kingdom of God, that sometimes when you get very overly educated people, they don't want to understand it. They don't want to hear what you're saying. They don't want to listen to the things that people are saying, particularly when it comes to the truth of God. They just want to hear what they want to hear and then be done with it, uh, you know, get rid of you and, and not be involved in it. When you're trying to drive someone into the ground with facts and not pay attention and not dig into what they're saying, you miss the forest through the trees. You're not paying attention to the point that one third of X, Y, and Z is happening, trying to destroy whatever that person was trying to say. And that's why Jesus keeps telling people in Matthew and Mark, listen, you have ears here. He is begging people to dig into this, to understand what is going on. But it's obvious because the Pharisees never got it. Half the apostles didn't get it when Jesus was giving them parables. He wants people to use their ears and their heart and their spirit that the Holy Spirit gives them and bring this into them, and they're just not doing it. So then he says, okay, you don't get the parable, and then he explains the rocky ground is the people who hear the word and receive it immediately initially, but then no roots form. You know, he goes through the whole parable. We did that in Matthew and says at the end that when seed is sown on good soil, they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. So he hopes that in those cases, people will hear with their ears, 
will perceive his truth, will understand it, and will in turn then be forgiven. He's hoping that happens. People just don't. They hear what they want to hear. Talks about the lamp under the basket. Who would do that, right? You would never put light under a basket because you want light to shine. So he is telling people, let your light shine. And again, he says the words, anyone who has ears, hear. Let him hear. Pay attention to what you hear with the measure you use. It will be measured to you and still more will be added to you. And for the one who has, more will be given. And for the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Reminds me of, we got to the end of Matthew, we heard the parable of the talents. If you are given a lot, if you use what you've been given, more is given to you. And he is begging people to do the very thing that he says people aren't doing. Then here comes our new parable. The kingdom of God is like a man who scattered seed on the ground, sleeps, and then goes to bed, gets up the next day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He doesn't understand it. The earth produces it. The first blade, then the ear, then the grain. And when the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it and harvests it. It is that parable of the kingdom of God. It is not up to you to understand how faith works, how faith grows in a person, how faith manifests itself. Heck, I became a Christian from one day when I was not a Christian. And I can't even explain it to you. I don't know how that seed grew. I don't know how it worked. I don't know why it grew. I mean, if you looked at me before I was a Christian, I'm not interested in God. I don't care if I push up daisies at the end of days. I don't need a God. If you do, that's cool. You be you, boo-boo, but I don't need this. And then I went from one day of like that to the next day of believing. What happened? (laughs) I don't know. I can't even tell you. The best analogy I ever gave people, it's like when you see that illusion where it's a drawing and it has a young woman and an old woman. And you initially look at this illusion and you see one or the other, the young woman or the old woman. And then someone points out to you, oh, so don't you see the young woman? Here's her nose and there's her chin. And then you're like, oh yeah, now I totally see it. And then you can't see it back the other way or it's harder to see that way. That's exactly it. One moment I saw life like this and one moment I saw life like something else. I don't know how it works. He's telling people, don't be concerned about what happens. Be concerned about sowing seeds on the ground. Okay, are we sharing the seeds of God? And are we planting the seeds of God? That's the part that matters the most. It's always interesting in the Bible, and we will see it time and time again. This is going to be a common theme. God includes us in his plan. He could do the whole thing by himself, but we are included. Then what is the kingdom of God like? It's like a grain of mustard seed grown. Again, tiny little seed, and then it grows into this beautiful trees, and the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. Again, we're not going to go into detail about the birds and what the bird means and it represents. What we're going to see is that something so small can become something so large and healthy. So he told them the parable so that they could hear it. And it says he didn't speak to them without parables. He's in his parable phase and even privately with his disciples explained everything. The parables that are meant to be there, again, are to explain things that people can understand, but not just educated people. He's not talking like a lawyer. Well, if you check out paragraph three, article two, section one, you will find he's not talking like that to people. He is talking in a way people understand but he's telling them something hard and he wants them to dig deep and get it. And so same thing with this farmer who plants a seed. You don't have to understand how it matures. Just know it will. Then we heard in parables of Matthew that the farmer, when it comes time to harvest, everything is going to get split into two, the weeds and the wheat. We don't have to understand that either. We just know that that's the way it works. It's God's power that makes the seed grow inside of us. And it's not the sower that does it. It's not the earth itself that does it. It's not the sun itself that does it. It's only through the power of God. So my meditation for this week is thinking about the parable of seed growing. Again, I went through that process and 
I try to think what happened. I try to think how it changed and I can't begin to tell you, but I think I want to spend some time reflecting on that part of my life. And I think, you know, too, you can think about how faith happens and how it's such a mystery to us and it doesn't come in the way we expect and it doesn't happen when we expect it. You know, we see certain people who we thought would never become a Christian become one. How does that happen and how does that seed grow? My prayer this week is for the people who don't know Jesus and to pray for them that they may have that experience of little leaf, the ear, the grain, and the ripened grain. I hope people get to that point when it can germinate inside them and they can have that harvest of their souls. And what I want to share with people is that, that God is behind every seed that is thrown out there. You don't have to be afraid that you're not going to say the right words. You're not going to do the right thing. Soil in the tray and plant your seed. That's God. God is doing the whole part of it. It takes pressure out of all of us who are trying to share our faith. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that I have a brand new podcast called Buzz, Blossom, and Squeak. It's, it's not a religious podcast, but it's about nature and understanding it better and seeing frogs and trees and clouds. I hope you enjoy it. It's one of the great joys I have in my life is seeing this amazing creation God has created around us and appreciating it. So Buzz, Blossom, and Squeak, you can find it in your podcatcher of choice. Thanks so much for listening.